Good afternoon. We're going to call the meeting of the Budget Advisory Committee to order. Can we have a roll call? Sure. Uh, Chair Bergerman? Here. Chair, Vice Chair Hall? Hopefully, maybe she's trying to find a parking space. Uh, Ms. Major? Hopefully. And Ms. Hales? Here. And Ms. Howard? Here. So it looks like the main part of the agenda today will be updates from Ron. You probably all received an addendum to the agenda. We're going to address that under board comments further down on the main agenda. So I'll turn it over to you, Ron. Okay. I, I know you're all just chomping at the bit to go over my riveting presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's... It's like I, I think I took, if you look at last year's, it does change, not change the numbers, but you know, it, it works and stuff. But like I said, I'm going to try to go through the financial update for the previous year, fiscal year 23, which we're still not totally completed yet. We still got the auditors coming next week. And a financial update for this fiscal year through the end of December and just a little ARPA update for you. That's the American Rescue Plan Act and that money. So to get started, I'm Starting out with the general fund, that's at September 30, 2023. Majority of the revenues are coming in at or over budget, which is good. Total revenues, 33.8 million. That's 473,000 or 1% over the budget of 33.4 million. Just rounding up there. Property taxes, the largest revenue source at 40%. The total is 12,477,927. <coughs> A 1.5 million increase in revenues over fiscal year 22. And, you know, there's a lot of revenues within the general fund, like 150 line items. So I just try to go over and pick out some of the, the, the larger ones there. But um, some of the revenues coming out under budget is code enforcement fines. And those can really vary. It just depends on if somebody gets fined. And I think last year in 22, there was a larger fine. This year, there hasn't been so many. So that was under budget. And recreation fees still hasn't really picked up since, you know, before the pandemic, but it's, it has been increasing. And an interest earnings total for the general fund was 873000 And the general fund expenditures, the total expenditures are 33 point, almost $33.2 million, coming in 233000 or 0.7% over the budget of $33.4 million. Personnel cost, a 6.89% increase over 22, mostly due to salary increases and overtime related to, we had Hurricane Idalia, you know, towards the end of, uh, end of August last year. So we had uh, overtime for that. I think all those expenses came to uh, <coughs> rough about $250,000 to 300,000. Uh, operating costs up 29.99% over 22, mostly due to the cost of fuel, operating supplies, Performing art performances, we're having more performances compared to pre-pandemic um, uh, and during the pandemic where it, we didn't have any, but uh, increases in insurance, uh, property insurance, electricity, and required GASB 96 disclosure. I know you probably what, what all know is, what GASB what, what stands for. <laughs> I know what it stands for, but what is the It's our rulemaking body for us government people. It's a government accounting standards board. And this was GASB 96. It dealt with... Uh, subscription-based IT arrangements and what it required you to do like we have our, our all our computer on the cloud system we pay and we just had a new contract with Central Square for five years it's roughly two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year we pay five-year contract they require you to really to I guess in easy terms you have to instead of just paying it weekly well we did pay it monthly I'm sorry but we're supposed to, almost like a financing arrangement. So we have to record it as net proceeds. So you, the total is like 1.3 million for the five years. So you have to record it as a, a revenue net proceeds and plus an expenditure, which you, you'll see, I don't know if you'll see it individually in the IT department, but it's required. We didn't receive any money, but we're, we're required to, to close that, you know, with a, and it creates a, an asset for it, a liability, and then we amortize it over the five years. Okay. Similar to the right of use asset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And l last year we had to do leases. So last year I had to go through all the leases that we had and do the same arrangement with that. So 
this year we had the IT stuff. So <laughs> if you see the total revenues, like the 33 million we have, that includes the 1.3 million on both the revenues and expenses. So if you subtract those out, that brings you more really in line to what the actual revenues and expenses were. Uh, capital outlay increase of 241%. We had the remaining of the mausoleum roof. We had some public safety building improvements, a lot of the flooring in the public safety building. I think that came to, I think, about $160,000. The sponge boat improvements, we think we spent $46,000 to update the sponge boat down there at the docks. And some city hall improvements between, I think, the planning department was revised, and then across the way, the old PD department was revised for some offices over there. Uh, grants and aids is down 91%, was down, but it was because last year we had to pay, well, we paid the hospital for the portion for the ER that we were, we had in reserve for the, for their construction of their ER. And last year we also had some transfers um, to the fleet department and the land preservation fund and it's the Savannah Cove loan payment. Uh, other governmental funds, impact fee rates were not increased uh, due to state statutes. Um, to increase the impact fee rates, you have to have a study done and validate that, okay, if you wanna increase them, you have to have somebody to say, this is why you're doing it to, to validate those increases. So we didn't have one done. Uh, some of the impact fees coming in on budget are slightly under, were library, recreation, transportation, water and sewer. Some that came in over budget were police, fire and general government. Uh, gas tax came in slightly under budget uh, by $9,900. Uh, penny tax came in over budget by 94000 And for the CRA, we had property tax receipts of 398000 That's the city portion, and the county portion was 357000 And just as a reference, the last year's taxable value increase for the CRA was 14.6%. The sanitation fund, the new five-year agreement, contract agreement, which began March 31st, 2022. The rates are adjusted annually every March 31st, so we've got an adjustment coming up next month. The max is 3%. The, the board established that when they did the contract, so they couldn't, it wouldn't go over that. Um, they had a big yard waste project out there that was completed. A, uh, finally, just this last year, I think $600,000 where the expenses were just this last year. So it totaled 932000 We had debris removal of 597000 That's larger than what we usually have. It usually averages about 200000 Excuse me. Um, they had a big pile of debris over there, <laughs> and it came to like towards August or something. I think there was a freight there could be a fire or something like that. So we paid uh, like a good almost 300000 to get the big pile of debris over there removed and stuff. So that was, uh, you know, it was almost $400,000 over the average of our debris removal that we spend out there. We bought a new loader for 198,000 for the yard waste. The other one um, <coughs> stopped working and they were leasing one, I think, paying 5,000 a month. So we finally said, let's, let's get a loader. Once we get our FEMA money back, we designate we put some of that to help pay for the loader because the loader is part of the yard waste, which, did, which, which handles debris removal. So once we get that money back, we're going to apply it back to the sanitation fund. We also bought a street sweeper, and we charged half of it to the sanitation fund, which was $168,000. Um, water and sewer fund. Um, both water and sewer revenues were up, 251000 and 284000 respectively. Um, the consumption use increased over the prior year, about 3.13%. And there was no rate increase to start the year, but the board approved a rate increase and um, just this last, uh, they started December 1st of 23 of 9.9%. But all of 23, there was, there was no rate increase. And the next rate study is to, to be in 2025. The marina fund revenues came in just slightly under budget, but so did expenses. And the marina fund is still out of the deficit position for I think the second year in a row. Stormwater fund revenues came in at 11,000 over budget. We received the, from the surety for the previous contractor that left the job, we received 1,050,000. Uh, the new contract, which is, uh, I guess, beginning to start work, uh, that money will go towards that new contract for the pay, get that work done finally. And the next rate study for stormwater will be in, um, I think it's going to be in 2024. 
And then the golf course fund is, continues to keep amazing me and stuff over the last couple of years since after COVID. And, you know, they had revenues of 2298000 for 23 an increase of 329000 over fiscal year 22, which was a good year. The deficit position in the golf course is eliminated for the first time since we took over the operations of a 96. So it's, it's been a long time, but we're finally out. We're <laughs> Knock on wood, we're finally out of the positives and hopefully stay there. Uh, just um, on, the, on the hurricanes, we're still working on Hurricane Ian. Uh, I think we're getting close to wrapping that up and getting the money back for that. And in Hurricane Idalia, we've been working on that and we hope to get both of those this fiscal year, the money for, for that. Just some of the capital projects that have been going on this year. Uh, that land purchase on Roosevelt Boulevard, Lemon Shattuck Street, Seabreeze Drive Sewer, the Pent Grills Project, which is that stormwater project right over here, water pipe valve replacement, manhole sewer line rehabilitation, um, another water and sewer thing, convert gas chlorine to bleach at the treatment plant, <coughs> the city clerk new building, which they are back working on now, Michelle's building over there with, the <laughs> with her big office. <laughs> Mango phase two, Anclo dredging, uh, roadway reconfiguration, Tarpon Road, which is all done, Anclo turn basin, which they're working on now, and then they're going to start the extend the Pinellas Trail and the yard waste project, which is done now. Um, on some on investments, you know, we've been getting roughly about five percent on investments year this year between the the local pool and and uh, treasury bills and. Um, the federal instruments. I try to ladder them from two to five years and then also monitor the cash flows wherever that money is in, you know, make sure we got liquidity to pay the bills out of that individual fund. <coughs> and then the, as far as debt, we had our annual payment October 1st of 1.5 million. The ladder truck, uh, we paid our 239,000 last April and the last payment on that truck will be this April. Um, had a fire, the other fire truck, uh, had our second payment in May and then we'll make our third payment this month and then there'll be three more, three more payments left on that one. I'll take a drink here before <laughs> my throat starts to get dry. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. General fun. And so and what it ended up, we had, like I say, as we mentioned earlier, we had the revenues of 33.8 million. It was 5.2 million over last year. And of course, I much I mentioned that that sub sub subscription based, that's 1.3 is included in that. And expenditures totaled three at 33.1 million, uh, 3 million nine hundred eighty seven thousand over 22. And this sort of break, this is going back to the revenues, just showing you the major items where those increases were. Property taxes uh, over the, from 23 over 22, 1.5 million. Uh, permits and fees, almost 500,000 over the previous year, mostly due to electric franchise fees and building permit fees. Uh, intergovernmental, 177,000, I'm sorry, charges for service, 177,000 more, mostly due to EMS, a school resource, resource officer, and ticket sales. And then we had the interest earnings, which was up 1.2 million. Um, and then down below, highlighted in yellow, that's the actual amount, the 1,254,538 of the subscription-based IT arrangement that we had to post with the proceeds and the expense I mentioned earlier. In the general fund for the revenues, the taxes are the biggest one at 52%. Um, I always like to show the top 10 revenues, of course. Property taxes the 1.5 million, and then all the other ones were positive numbers going down with utility tax electric, 266,000 and electric franchise fee, 344,000. So all the larger ones were coming in more than last year. And plus, if you look at the far right, they're above 100%. So that's good. They were over budget. I, I try to look at some other ones of, of interest, a school resource officer. That's, that's money from the school board for the officers that work the schools. Um, 
Tree Bank was more, had brought in more money. I'd say performing our ticket sales are up again. Recreation fees are up, but they're still under budget. And there's the interest earnings that increase of 1.2 million, and then the code enforcement fines, which is which is down from the previous year. <coughs> uh, general fund expenditures, um, personnel costs are up 6.89 percent, mostly due to salary benefit increases and some additional expenses from Hurricane Idalia. Operating uh, due to fuel insurance, the property insurance, utility costs. And a GASB 87, which was the leases, and GASB 96, which is that subscription-based IT thing I mentioned. Uh, capital outlay, you know, the, we had the cemetery mausoleum roof, the public safety building flooring. I think I mentioned these things already. It must have been another slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm yep. repeating myself again. <laughs> I liked it so much, I just thought I'd say it again. <laughs> uh, grants and aids, the ER hospital. Okay, yeah, I said those before. <laughs> Uh, expenditures in the general fund, uh, personnel, as always, it's the biggest expense, is at 67%. Um, in the general fund, we have the fund balance accounts, and we have the restricted, and then we have the unassigned. So what I'm trying to show here is the different restricted monies, what the balance was last year in 22, and the balance in 23, and then the change. Um, <coughs> cemetery perpetual care, 785000 Compensated absence is 1.3, tree bank 418,000. This is the balances at the end of 23. Um, encumbrance is 673,000. Insurance reserve 202. Uh, lease is 152,000. Donations 319,000. Prepaid items 10,000. Right away 148,000. Uh, sidewalks 40,000. Restricted reserve used in, 20, in the 24 budget. When we did the budget, we had to, we used some money to help balance the 24 budget, and that's what, that's what those are restricted money. So we were required to restrict them in the previous year since we used them in the next year's budget. Um, public safety reserve 435,000, uh, maintenance reserve other 852,000, and then there's a disaster reserve 50,000. We've had out there forever, it seems like, and then the perpetual exclusive easement of 720,000. Which we've had since for the from the cell tower out there by the uh, fire station seventy. That money has been mentioned, uh, designated to use towards when we finally do the new fire station seventy. <coughs> uh, unassigned fund balance is still hanging around eight point six million, and down below I mentioned it's fifteen thousand under last year's. Unassigned fund balance is at 27% of expenditures. You know, the policy says to be at 20%, which the 20% means it should be, you know, that minimum of 20% is 6.3 million. So we're 2.3 million over that. Um, I guess the only thing, I think I'm, I did a presentation a couple of years to y'all just to say we, keep, we, we still keep unassigned at like 8.8, 8.7, 8.6 .8 million. In our expenditures are increasing. I can't remember if you remember, but I did a thing sort of projecting, you know, and if we still keep it at 8.6, 8.7 million, eventually in the two, three, four years, we might be bumping up to that where we're at 20% with that. So at some time, it'd be nice to, you know, we start maybe try to increase that so we keep above that minimum. And what's the process for that? Well, it'd be what you have to do is just reserve off the money. And I know once I think to, Previous uh, Chairman Claire made a recommendation once when they had the property tax increase. You know, should we take five hundred thousand and say, can we put this here? But I think there was some other project that came up and we put that money there. So. And the decision is made by. That's part of the budget process. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know there, there is you know a little bit excess money here, but. Like the public safety, four hundred thirty-five thousand. You know, if I didn't put that there, we could use that money. But we have some items that we wanted to use that money for. Once uh, some money for part of the high, a new high water vehicle. Um, we also had. Um, we tried to. We started this a couple years ago when we made the lump sum payment for the pension contribution for police and fire. I never know if the actuary is going to come back and say you need to put in more money. So that's why I always like to have that. The 852,000 is uh, designated by management. 
uh, where there was part of it is some items that were cut out of the budget last year that people said they still wanted to put, you know, get those items and we, we save, you know, part of that money for that. But so, the, but there is still could be some more money in there for reserves and maintenance as they come up. I never know when the Tom comes up and our public works guy and says that, you know, an air conditioner just broke over here. I need 50,000 bucks. So that's what I try to use that for. Should we, going into budget season, as you start preparing for that, like this board make the motion that we do put aside extra funds so you can bake that in? Well, I think it's it's a it's a concern. Like I say, we did, I did the presentation a couple of years ago, and I think my projection was by 2029 that we might be hitting that. Now I'm thinking it might be 2027. Mm -hmm. You know the way the expenditures are going, but I mean. I think it would be a good idea, you know, else I'd hate to wait until the end and all of a sudden we're hitting 20% minimum. And right. I'm finding that's with a, you know, the other funds that require a minimum fund balance are the water and sewer fund, the sanitation fund, and the stormwater fund. So it seems like the way the expenses are creeping up now, it's just, we're getting closer to that fund balance minimum, which I don't want to say keep, might keep me up at night or something like that, but you start to worry about it. And especially, you know, they have all these projects going, and then a lot of these projects are all coming in over over the cost. Well, they'd say, well, we've got to find more money for these projects. So you're trying to juggle the money between where can you find the money for these projects. Do you have a slide that shows expenses year over year by chance, just so we could... Uh, suggest um, a number for our motion. You mean like general fund? Yeah, well, because you said the it's twenty percent of expenses is the twenty percent of expenses is the fund balance minimum. Yeah. Of general fund. General yes. Fund? Okay, so do you have that year over year by chance? Like maybe for the last few years? No, I, well, I've just got this one right here, which shows uh, you know oh, that in twenty two it was twenty the expenses was twenty nine million one seventy five and. And then in 23, it's 33 million 162, but it also includes that 1.3 million. One million, so. Which one, which one million? Say that again. The one million for the um, software thing the that IT, was like a one-off. So we'd be looking at 30 million. subscription-based IT arrangement. Right. Okay. I would just say, looking at 30 million that we'd want to take a percent of. Maybe even more though. Okay. So last year it was 29. This year it's 33, but we're taking off that one and a half. Uh, did, did I hear you right? 1.3 million. 1.3 million, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so that puts us around 31 and a half or so. And yeah. that's. You know, it might be something as we get in the budget season to say, hey, we need to, you know, we're getting down there. We're at 27%. We, you know, we used to be up 30%. Well, once we're over 30%, we're, we're creeping down close to that 20%. Yeah. How do we go about getting the 20% raised? in the policy is it in the charter or the pol just a policy it's a fund balance policy you know between the general fund 20 percent uh -huh. water sewer storm water sanitation are at 25 percent mm -hmm. i would i would i would say general fund should be 25 percent thank you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a suggestion. We can make that recommendation. Yeah, we well, 20% yeah. is a good percentage. Some cities, do, our, our, gov our government officers association recommends two months worth, which is about 17%. Some cities do 17%, some do 20%. You know, you can, if, you, if you want to do 25%, we could. It's gonna... I've always been a proponent of more in the reserve. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it's a minimum. What does the policy say when you reach the minimum, though? If you when you reach the minimum, if you go below it, you have two fiscal years to recoup it back up. So you can go below it, but you have to re, you have to put it back. You got to get it back to the minimum. As a priority over other expenses, effectively, right? Right. You've got to have a plan to probably budget. Then you know, okay, we want if say we're say we're 500,000 below it, and we probably have to budget something the next year to make, okay, we've got to set a reserve aside because we need to bring that fund balance back up to the minimum. Mm -hmm. And if expenses increase, your minimum might be even a little bit more than when it occurred. And we're at 27 now, if we set the minimum for 25. I guess, it, it, it does it say anything in the policy as far as like an ideal number? I know there's a minimum, but does it say try to keep it at X? The minimum is no, right. it just says no. uh, the minimum shall be 25%, 20% in the general fund, 20% of expenditures. Okay. 
So we would, we would, this committee could make a motion to change that policy. If, and I just think you'd probably make a rec recommendation. Do we want to do that? I would make a motion now that we recommend the policy be changed to 25% minimum for the general fund. Do we have a second? I'll second. Yeah. Roll call, Michelle. Ms. Howard? Yes. Ms. Hales? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hall? Yes. Chair Bertrand? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Because I remember a couple of years ago, we made the recommendation that they do the 500000 and put that aside, and it was decided to spend the money elsewhere. And I think that when you see that trend, it's just time to say, hey, okay, if you're not going to listen, yeah, let's yeah, do something point. else. Um, because then if they do it again this year, then we'll just inch a little closer and it'll make everybody less comfortable. I'm just thinking, you mentioned a range. Like you said, if you had some wording in there, it said, okay, ideally it's 25%, but if it gets down to 20, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of something else. Or yeah. But even with our recommendation, it still has to go to the board for them to approve. Correct. The board of commissioners. Right. Okay. What, what would that look like? What, what would your suggestion be based on what it was in prior years if there was language to say, try to keep it at this level, but the minimum is... <laughs> Well, we've never had it like that in previous years. It's just been, you know, the minimum fund balance is 20%. Okay. If you go below it, you have two fiscal years to get it back up. To keep it like that. The 20%? Uh, to, to keep the language like that where it's just a minimum. Well, no, I was just thinking out loud. I know you mentioned that, too, and just to say, you know, you know, if you did go below it for an emergency, like there's a hurricane, you know, knock on wood, there's no hurricane. But from what I've heard from other cities, you know, they've, They've wiped out all their fund balance, and really? so there might be a situation where it's it's all gone, and then you've just got to got to wait for your probably your FEMA reimbursements to come back and stuff. Yeah, but from the looks of the uh, one, it takes a while for FEMA. So you, you, you oh, still I haven't know. got all the money. Years, right? <laughs> yeah, years. We've been talking about that. Year. It takes yeah. a while. Doesn't it? <laughs> they seem to be. I, I don't know if there's more urgency now. I don't know with Hurricane Ian, which was a year and a half ago, I don't know if they were busy down at Fort Myers and, you know, it was hard because we kept going, well, what's taking so long? This one now, we seem to be, they're, they're, they're more on top of it with Idalia and stuff. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, general fund exp expenditures. Oh, I did this one. Ago, 67. Per oh, I just went back to this slide, didn't I? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought it looked familiar. Um, a little water and sewer fund for 23. Uh, charges for services with the main revenues, water and sewer up 633,000. Interest earnings up 714,000. There was no rate change last year, uh, but water consumption and use increased 3.13%. Uh, water revenues, of course, 97%. That's mostly water, sewer, reclaimed. Um, the main the main uh, revenues of water of the water sewer fund is water sales, which were up two hundred fifty one thousand over last year, and sewer sales up two hundred eighty four thousand, affluent thirty thirteen thousand for a total of five hundred fifty six thousand. Uh, the expenditures of the water and sewer fund um, uh, personnel up three hundred eighty five thousand, operating services up one million eighty one thousand. Uh, debt service roughly stays the same every year for the water plant bond, and then transfers for a total expenditure increase of 1.4 million. And I just mentioned down below, you don't see capital there because at the end of the year, I've got to capitalize those expenses, and they come out of the expense, and then they go to the asset. A <laughs> um, little bit of sanitation fund. Um, charges for services, that's the revenues, uh, up 1.2 million and interest up 129,000 for a total increase in sanitation of 1.3 million. Most of the increase is due to the new contract, which started in March of 22, almost April to March 31st of 22. So you had a half year of the new rate, but 20, 22 had a half year, but 23 had a full year of the new in, uh, new garbage rate increase, which was about 25%. So that's why you're seeing such a big increase in the sanitation fund was due to the new contract and 
I think it averaged about an increase over the different types of rates, whether it was dumpsters, roll-offs, and residential, it was about 25% increase. So you'll see like 1.2 million, 1.3 throughout here as far as revenues, expenses. Uh, this is the revenues uh, just breaking out solid waste alone up 988,000, recycling 72,000. Yard waste tipping fees, 148,000 increase over the previous year. Uh, expenses of the sanitation fund um, up one point, almost 1.5 million. The, the, the bulk of that is the operating services, 1.3 million, and that's where we pay the contractor, that's waste management, that's picking up all the garbage and recycling, and that's where you know the increase of those fees at 25% was there. I just mentioned down below that we had a big project that finished up, the yard waste project, 932,000. The yard waste loader, 198,000. Uh, Hurricane Ian reimbursement to go towards that, I think I mentioned that. We had the street <coughs> sweeper also. Um, and these were the expenses paid to the contractor, waste management, solid waste. We paid them $5 million. It was uh, 852,000 over the previous year, uh, and for recycling, almost 65,000 over the previous year, and then t yard waste tipping fees was 400,000 over the previous year, and that's, like I say, the big pile of stuff that was over there that we had to get rid of, uh, and that total increase for those expenses is 1.3 million. Just to get into some other funds, just to try to show you all the funds that are out there and what I'm just showing here, the different funds, the balance last year, the balance at the end of this year and the change. The hospital lease fund, we've got in yellow there, we got 3,058,000 in there. Uh, the ARPA money, 11,700,000. Local option gas tax, about 78,000. School crossing guard, 10,000. Handicap fund, 17,000, almost 18,000. <laughs> uh, police impact fund, 552000 The fire impact fund, 22000 uh, The The you know, loan payment was paid off for that. We had a loan, 500000 when they built Station 71. 500000 went towards that, but we borrowed money to pay that. So it was an inner fund loan, so that was paid off this last year. Library impact fund has 480000 and that's planned for, their, they've got, a, in fact, they just got the grant, 500000 for the library to make improvements. The grant's 500000 city's matching 500000 so there's about a thousand, I'm sorry, a million dollars of improvements that are be going to go towards the library. She's got some, I, I saw the layout, some nice little rooms where they're going to do different rooms for different sort of things inside the library. Uh, recreation impact, about 119,000. General government impact, 133,000. Transportation impact, 260,000. Uh, the Federal Equitable Sharing Fund, same thing with the balance last year, the balance this year, 139,000. Public Art Fund, 147,000. Land Preservation Fund, 15,000. Uh, 180,000 of that was used last year to purchase the I think it was called the South Florida property. It's called Henry Henry Ross property. It it costs like I think seven hundred and twenty thousand, but we use the land preservation fund one hundred eighty thousand. We use four hundred thousand from ARPA, and about one hundred fifty thousand from the stormwater fund to purchase this land for stormwater purposes. Um, let's see, recycling grant. grant uh, we've got 152,000 in there, and then the CRA's got about 1,153,000 in there. Some of that money, that 1,153,000, that reserve, they still have 200,000 that they reserves aside for parking, and 100,000 for a jitney garage. Uh, the police education fund, 19,000, almost 20,000. Confiscated trust, police confiscated trust, um, 35,000. Employee benefit cost deferral, 100, almost 122,000. The capital project fund, 543,000. <clears> the sidewalk improvement fund, 1.7 million. The local option sales tax fund, 7 million. Um, as I mentioned down below, of that seven million, we do have 4.8 million of it is cumbered, and then 
there's projects that haven't been started yet that really take up most of the balance there of that $7 million. Don't worry, I'm getting through all the funds. I know we got a lot of funds here, but I'm <laughs> just trying to get through them all. The sewer impact funds got $1,483,000. Water impact fund, $2,253,000. The sanitation fund, $1,428,000. It, it's down about $500,000 for where I'd like to be um, as far as the minimum fund balance. And like I say, most of that was due to the, in August. We had to pay that I think it was over $300,000 for the debris removal from the pile. And then the $198,000 i am waiting on from the put the revenue in from the Hurricane Ian to cover the loaders. So once we get those, we should be, we get back to get our, get it back up to about $2 million. That's where we'd like to be with the sanitation fund. Um, marina fund, a balance of $36,000. Stormwater fund, 1,479,000, and a good portion of that is going to be used for the Pent Gross project over there. And the golf course fund for the third, first time is at 377, 376,000 to the positive, and it looks like they're on their way for another good year this year so far. On that golf course fund, are you looking at reinstating the inner fund transfer since they're in the positive? I... I I don't think so. I'm just so happy to have that thing out of the negative. I just, <laughs> you know, I just, I know they want to do some things. They're doing um, some tee box repairs this year, a little over 200000 And there was something else they were doing, like 50000 Oh, design for a, a new clubhouse. They wanted to start getting some ideas for a new clubhouse. So that might be in the future, but... Yeah, I don't know if I want to hit him up with that transfer again. <laughs> Let him be positive for a little while. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, yes. <laughs> I sort of promised him I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we know how promises go. I don't know. <laughs> and this is the debt of the city. And then the highlighted in the far right is like that water plant bond. The current the principal balance at the end of last year, $27.6 million. The fire ladder truck, uh, 232000 The last payment's going to be in April, so that'll be paid off. Uh, the fire truck from 2021, um, $517,000. it will be a payment in May, then two more after that. And then the, the truck at the bottom, we were supposed to get this April, and the first payment would be in April. But well, that says year 2,223, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a long time away, isn't it? No, mm -hmm. I didn't notice that. That truck is not going to be, it, I guess all these trucks are getting delivered. Now they're saying when you order a fire truck, it takes four years to get them. When, years ago, it used to be one year. Then it was two years. This year, you know, this one, we're not going to get it in April. They're saying it's going to be oh, one year from now, February, February of 25. But we got a principal and interest payment on it, and so... I'm saying we shouldn't have to make that. And so I've gotten with legal counsel on that. And she's drafting a letter to say, hey, and part, part of the agreement says, even if PNC, the bank, wants interest, it, in, the let, in the agreement, it says that the supplier, 108 and Pierce, are responsible for any interest payments. So, we're, so the interest payment is due in April. We don't plan on paying on. So. Okay. okay. You expect that to kind of get resolved? Sounds like. Pardon me? Do you expect that to kind of get resolved with, with the plan? With the fire truck there? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the attorney said, well, as we get close to April, she's going to get our letter drafted and send it to PNC and just say that, you know, we don't, we're not responsible for this. We shouldn't have to make any payments. Uh, we need to extend the performance bond. There's a performance bond, but it's only two years that goes through it this April. Mm -hmm. So we want to extend it through next February for the performance bond. And then I mentioned, you know, we got to use an older truck still, and they're, they're, they're high maintenance. And can you, she says, well, I'll throw that in there, too, and see what they say. Because, you know, the fire trucks are about 20,000, 25,000 years of maintenance on them, the older ones. Yeah. Um, Interfund loans, they're basically no, no more interfund loans. That's a loan from one fund to the other. The last one is a sanitation, a CRA fund, 100000 that we'll pay this year. And we won't, at the, that time, we won't have any more inner fund loans. 
Ah, on the 24 financials through December. I tried to briefly try to go in and put something together here. Uh, revenues in the general fund are up 1.3 million, 1,356,000 over last year at December. Um, the main reasons for that is, of course, property taxes. Uh, we, we're 1,154,000 over last year at this time. Millage rate is still at 5.37. The taxable value increase was 11.65% last year, and the prior year was 136 I'm not, we're not sure what to expect this year, but I guess we'll find out. But I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to be in the double digits anymore, but we'll see uh, as far as taxable value increase. Uh, projected revenue increase over last year would be $1,422,000. Other revenues uh, pluses and up and down are the electric, electric utility tax plus 75000 Building permits are down 13,000, but that can vary too. Sometimes you just get one big project and it'll, it'll bring it up over the budget. Tree bank receipts are plus 84,000. Uh, revenue sharing sales tax plus 30,000. Electric franchise fees plus 14,000. Uh, performing art ticket sales are down at 20,000. Uh, and interest earnings are plus 60,000. And as I say, we're three months into the year, so we're pretty early still. Uh, expenses of the general fund through December were a plus 881,000 of expenses in the general fund. And here's the expenses through December 31st, uh, comparing to last year. Um, personnel is up about 505,000, 7.69%, uh, mostly due to salary increases, retirement contributions, and health insurance. So. Operating up 15.58% uh, due to electric, property tax insurance, repairs and maintenance, and operating supplies, and capital outlay increase 30%, mostly due to that we bought the high water vehicle, which is a total cost of 247000 They found out when we had Hurricane Idalia, we didn't have vehicles that could get, especially to the fire that was out there. So... We bought a high water vehicle. We have it now. Uh, we split the cost between the general fund and the penny fund. Um, uh, a little bit of water and sewer. Revenues are uh, so far 1,174,000, 320,000 more than last year. Oh, I'm sorry, that's total revenues. Water sales are 153,000 more than last year at December 31st. Sewer sales, 88,000, effluent, 21,000. And as I mentioned, there was a 9.9% .9 increase. It started December 1st. That 9.9% .9 should bring in, you know, about 1.8 1, 1 million additional revenues to the water and sewer fund. Uh, expenditures of the general, of, uh, sorry, the water and sewer fund. Um, up 4.23%, mostly due to salary increases. Operating up 20%, you know, mostly due to electricity, cost of the required supplies, and the water plant operations. Uh, capital outlay increase of 14.5%, mostly due to capital expenditures, uh, multiple capital expenditures in the in 24. Uh, sanitation fund uh, revenues of. Uh, 1697000 We're down about 60000 but when I looked at our last cycle of 20, uh, December cycle 27 has a lot of roll-off charges. They didn't, they got posted in the next month, so that's why the revenues were down. Uh, the same goes with expenses, but along with expenses last year, we had a lot more expenses at that time <coughs> due to the yard waste project we had going on. Uh, stormwater fund, the revenues are up about 47000 We have 5% rate increase. Uh, stormwater expenses are, are down 30000 from last year. I think mostly due to the last year we had a little bit of the pent gross expenditures, but this year, we, in 2023, we had uh, none. And we had a little bit, but none this year. Golf course, uh, revenues are, are up 37000 over the previous year. Uh, expenses are up 9700 excuse me, 9700 over the previous year at December 31st. Uh, getting into invest, investments, um, just a little history. I always like to look at it. In December of 2018, we were earning 3%. Next year, it was 2%. 
December 2020, we're only earning 0.20 of 21.45. December 22, 5.06. And this last uh, December, we averaged 5%. Uh, try to uh, keep investments under five years and ladder the investments out. Uh, rates are, they, they talk, the Federal Reserve talks about, they talk, I think everybody, talk, I never know what, you know, first there's going to be six rate cuts this year, now they're talking three, there was supposed to be one in March, they don't think they're going to do one in March now, maybe the earliest, I don't know if they'll do one in May, maybe June, so, I don't know, you know, you just have to just keep watching them and stuff, so, but what I've been trying to do, you know, if I know the rates are going to go down, if there is a good investment that's long term that I can lock in, say it's 5%, knowing that, okay, their rates might, if they're a year from now, they might be at 4%, you know, trying to lock in anything I find at the higher rate if it's for two or three years, if I find something. I'm thinking you're already seeing the rates going down for future longer-term investments. That, like, because when I look out at CDs, you know, six months, eight months out, I'm, I'm seeing them trend down already. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're baking in the future rate cut. Yeah, and I can't do that. The banks, when we do it with the qualified public depository CDs, which are guaranteed by the state, they don't like to go out too far. You know, a year, 18 months is as far as they'll go out. Yeah, I wish they could go, would go longer, but so I really don't have any CDs right now. I, I know even this last week, Treasury bills all of a sudden went up because the CPI came in and all of a sudden it went, they went up 20 basis points. I was almost going to buy one, but I was just sort of holding out. Mm -hmm. Is that mostly what you're doing, uh, the Treasury bills? or Treasury bills and federal instruments, like Federal Home Loan Bank, Fannie Mae, is what we're authorized to invest in. Right. And right now they vary between, you know, 4.7. It depends on how, how long, if it's one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. But then I also see the call features. I like some of them are call th every three months, six months. If I can get one that's like, 12 months, 18 months, one year, I go, okay, if I can lock something, I don't have to worry about it. So, But you, but sometimes the longer calls, they're not going to pay quite as much interest. It might be a 4.75% for a two-year if it's non-callable for the two-year. Mm -hmm. um, just the, um, the uh, percentage of the portfolio, 12% in the checking account, which, I, you know, I, I don't know if it was a year or so ago when the rates were going up. Chase Bank never paid us interest. And I think maybe the people were starting to take out their money. So lo and behold, Chase came back and said, we're going to start paying you some interest. So I don't feel so bad keeping money in the checking account. They're paying 3.72% right now. You know, and it's liquid. So I, I don't feel it. Because usually if I kept over $2 million, $3 million, I just got to get it out of there. I, I think I used to drive Michelle nuts when she was here. She goes, Ron, you're getting down to $2 million. <laughs> but I, but yeah, so the Chase Bank is paying 3.72%, and then I got 12% in treasuries. I'm at the max in federal instruments of 50%, and then I got 20% in the local pool, which the local state pool is, is good. They're paying like 5.3%, you know, and it's liquid daily. But my fear is if the rates start to go down, I want to start to reduce that, and if I can lock in anything longer term, before that starts, for the rates in the, in the pool go down. I know you can't read this, but it, <laughs> it's all the investment. You know, part of this is when I do the report, it goes to the other, it, it goes to the board and everybody else. We're, I'm required for the investment policy to send out this report with the investment, plus this one that shows the transactions for the previous uh, three months. That's why I won't go through all these and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we got the slides. That's we, what, well, we can we, zoom in on our... <laughs> that's what we purchased, bought, transferred during the, the three months. And so usually if something <laughs> matures, even like, yeah, we had something matured yesterday. I really didn't have anything, but I, we sent it right away up to the state pool so I could get the interest rate. So it's not sitting in a Bank of America account. Cause, uh, a little bit about ARPA. As you probably know, we received $12.8 million. It's for any government service, but exception, you can't make contributions to the pensions, and you can't use it to offset. Say you wanted, you did a, wanted to do a tax decrease. You can't do that. The money has to be obligated by December 31st, 2024, so we got 10 months, but everybody knows that, you know, with, with the projects that we have to... 
the project has to go before the board and get a purchase order. Um, how, how, bef much, before how, much, how much of that $12.8 million do we have to take care of by the end of the year? Well, it's got to, oh, you mean as far as obligated? Yes. We're almost obligated on, let me see. This is a list of them right here. We got $13 million. The citywide marketing, that's all been paid. The 48000 for the mental health, that's been paid. The public safety building roof, is the, the, they're working on it now. The public safety building AC is going to the board next week. Fire Station 70 design is ongoing now. They're doing the design work. I think we've paid about half of that. Also, the cops and kids building design, that's been approved. So that's they're working on that now, too. The hospital fire panel... We have not paid anything yet, but I have a meeting with them about every two months. We do a Zoom call, and they talk to them. They said they've got a contractor, and the contractor knows they have to have it done by June, this June of 2024. The agreement says with the hospital, if it's not done by July 31st, you don't get any more money. So they know they've got to get this fire panel done if they want the $1.5 million. The chamber money of 50000 that's already been paid. Uh, um, cybersecurity, they're working on that in the water and sewer. The land purchase, South Florida, that was the 400000 that's been paid. Now, the Craig Park Seawall Phase 1, that was just recently moved by the board. We had, I had a timeline project of these projects going from, from now to 24 to 26, you know. But this was one of those projects where we weren't sure. I know Bob was thinking he's pretty confident he could get the purchase order this year and get it done. But out of just so we could sleep better, I think Mark and I thought this is, you know, we're, we're, we swapped the money. So that $1,569,000 went to a couple projects that are started now, the Lemon Shattuck project and the Elfersburg project, which has been approved and is starting. Um, so that $1,569,000 is like a switch with the penny fund because those other two projects were coming out of penny. This was ARPA, so we're just, we just moved those two projects. Uh, Craig Park Seawall Design, $228,000. That is ongoing with the engineering work. Uh, the Pent Grove Stormwater, that's been approved. They've, already, they've started work over here. Uh, the $1.8 million land purchase, that money's already out the door. We paid for that. Uh, at Lemon Shattuck Street, that's the one where we move money from that one million five hundred sixty-eight nine thousand. More there, and MLK South Spring. That project's ongoing. Bayshore Septic to Sewer. That one's going out for bid too. So, I know Water and Sewer knows they need to get that bid out, get it in. We need to get this all approved before next December. And the ninety-four thousand for South Spring tidal flooding has already been completed. Um, Highlighted in yellow down there at the end of December 31st, we've spent you know almost 3.3 million of the 12.8 million. We're, we've been getting interest earnings, so if you see like okay, Ron, it's 13 million. We only got 12.8, but we've I think last year we got about 300 thousand of interest earning. This year I'm thinking we might be you know get that or a little bit more because the rates are up a little bit. You mean interest from the money that you didn't spend yet in the investment? <coughs> right, this okay. ARPA money right now is sitting in the bank, so okay. I'm, I'm okay. trying to get as much interest as possible and ladder it out to maybe look my cash flows uh, when we need it. Yep. Um, yep. And per the ARPA agreement, you can use it for anything you want to. So, but really, it seems like we're just wrapping it back into some of these projects to help out. Yep. And the last slide, budget stuff, <laughs> not just. Just going into, you know, we're going to get the budget packages out in, in March. The departments have until the end of March to complete their budgets. In April, finance compiles a budget request, the project, the payroll, and balance of funds. Uh, get the budget to the city manager May 1st. May 6th through 10th, the city manager meets with the departments. And Now, these are tentative dates. You know, May 14th, I think it's probably a Thursday, I just said, we would meet with the budget and go over with it all. I'm not sure if that's still a good date or not. And then, oh, I'm sorry, May 14th would be getting the budget to you. May 16th would be the first meeting. That's probably a Thursday to get the budget to you. I mean, to go over the budget. And maybe the, the, the meeting starting May 23rd, going through June 13th, those are Thursdays. You know, whether those are still firm dates, but that's... 
about what we've done in the pre previous years. Yeah. And with that, I'm done. <laughs> Any other questions for Ron? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Are there any public comments? Staff, <laughs> sta staff comments? All right. Board comments. That brings us to the addendum to the agenda. It's springtime. That's when we usually elect officers to this board before the budget season starts. <coughs> but we have a couple of complicating factors here. We already are short people. There's two of us whose terms are technically up next month. Is that um, me? I'm one and you're one. Um, yeah. <laughs> me you. But the good news is y'all are both eligible for reappointment. But that has to go through the board, correct? Okay. <laughs> So I guess we need to find out if you're if you're interested in remaining on the board. Yes, yeah, okay. if, yeah. If I'm if eligible. If you can just send me an email, because um, they like to look at that when and I present it with the memo. Okay. I will do that. Uh, just send you an email stating that yeah, I. Yeah, you'd like to be reappointed. And I'll do the same. Okay. Yes. And if you know anybody that's interested. So then, at this point, we have to since. The two of us who were going off are interested in staying. We'll go ahead and try to elect officers. Is anyone else interested in serving as chair other than myself? You want to do first, Jeff? No. 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 <laughs> you sure? Yeah. When we, I'm, during budget season, I'm going to be out for two weeks. You are? Yeah. Okay. How about you? No, I'm good. I think you guys have done a great job. I'm looking at the calendar. I'm going to miss, I'll be good for the main meetings, but the next two, I will yeah, not be my, here. Yeah, same here. I'll be out. But I don't think it really, budget season doesn't start until like May, when they, like the the May meeting, technically. Um, the end, probably yeah. towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, and that'd be a question. I just don't know if you want to, what are we in February here, if you, if you want a March meeting, and, uh, unless something comes up, or, or you just want to wait until May, or... I don't have a problem with March meeting if there's something to discuss. Right. Um, I like the dates you have in May because the first two weeks in May I'll be out of the country. So I wouldn't be able to attend a meeting anyway the first two weeks of May. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if there's things to be discussed in March, I'm fine with that. I'll be out May 23rd and the following Thursday I'll be out of the country. So, so you, you'll be missing two? I'll be missing two of the meetings. And Ron, those are the meetings with the department, right? Um, yes. We'll record them for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I would be here for the, the overview, the first one you do, so, and I can send in comments if I have any. Yeah. Okay, so are we saying that I should remain as chair? Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about vice chair? Are you interested in remaining in that position? <laughs> yes, because no one else wants to. <laughs> yes, I'm interested. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I, I guess we have to get elected by the board or something? Or well, no, I'll send you the, the email. The, yeah. No, it's elected by. Yeah. Or not yeah. elected. Yes. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. Re adding a term. Yeah. The reappointment. Yeah. And, okay. since, and since we have a quorum at this meeting, assuming we're reappointed, we've already been elected as the officers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, the next item on the agenda was the next meeting, Ron. Do you, uh, do you think we need a March meeting? I really don't know what more I might have for you for, besides what we just went over here. Okay. Um, April, I'll probably, will have the audit done, but just, you know, going over that, but. I'd rather do that before we get into the budget season. So I would say do April then with the audit. Update. Shoot for the April for yeah. now and stuff because the the odd the year end audit will be done then and the yeah, final let's, final let's, numbers. Let's get that out of the way before we get into budget then. Yeah. Yeah, that date's April eighteenth. Okay. Okay. Any future agenda items other than we just talked about the audit? See you then. I'll adjourn at 2.59.